right, what's going on guys? All right, Pierre here using that max power turn on YouTube and we're back with week two of the GPC season six. This week we are against Aster and his Montreal Habsoles. So, uh, doing this before the battle, we're gonna, gonna be battling Aster in like 10 minutes or so. So I just wanted to get this done real quick because I do need to do the video today and I don't have a ton of time. So, Montreal Habsoles, his team is very scary. He's got Megalopony, Jirachi's a Zygarde 50%. I should probably just uh, hover over this. I'm gonna click on it, it will show up eventually. But, um, Megalopony, Jirachi, Zygarde 50%, Florges, um, Thunderous T, Z, Thunderous T, Empoleon, uh, Absol, Gorgeist, Masquerade, and Flareon. So, not really looking at Masquerade and Flareon. The rest of the team is fairly scary. Uh, Thunderous T, Z, I don't really know a ton about Z moves. Um, I played around with like two when I was doing, um, I was like, there it is. <laughs> now you can see the team. Um, so. I was playing around with it in um, with like two during uh, Sun and Moon, the non Pokemon meta, and it was fun. Uh, but I haven't really had the um, what you call it. I really had the time nor the really never. I really wanted to play around with Z moves that much. I mean, they're fun and they seem fun as well, but just not. No, 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 not to me. Um, not for me. At least not. At the moment, anyways. So, uh, gotta keep an eye out on that. Uh, his team's just very, very scary, very powerful, but also bulky, as in the floor, just Zygarde can be a very problematic Pokemon. And then you've also got, um, to deal with, uh, Empoleon's bulk as well. Thunder's T doesn't go down super easy. And, uh, Gorgeist, of course, could possibly, uh, show its face, and that would also be quite an issue. Um, so I had to build around that. It's a very scary team to build around. And for me, we have Mega Diancy, Volcanion, Skarmory, Tapu Wulu, Meloetta, Iraquanid, Electros, Palisand, Salk Marip, as usual. And uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and go straight to what I brought for this uh, battle. So it's gonna take a minute to load up because my computer decided to be dumb today. All right, I haven't gotten a message yet, so that means he's not ready. All right, so first up, first and foremost, we have Princess Diana. Diancy, of course, my static name. Uh, we're gonna be running Rock Polish this time because I do wanna outpace that Megalopony at some point. Um, Fake Out is still gonna hurt quite a bit uh, because of that 50 HP stat. I mean, defense, of course, isn't gonna, like, really, um, it's not gonna be a ton of damage to me, especially since it's not very effective, but considering it's a stab <laughs> attack from a um, Megalopony, it's gonna hurt. But uh, having that is gonna be really uh, good for me. Um, next up, we have Macaw, Skarmory. Uh, leftover Sturdy, of course, the Snare Set, Roost, Brave Bird, Defog, Stealth Rock. Brave Bird gives me something to hit, uh, just some damage. Uh, Stealth Rock, of course, to get Hazards up. And Defog, just another standard mod. Next up, we have Meloetta, Popstar, with the Assault Vest, Serene Grace, HPI, Psy Shock, uh, Shadow Ball, Thunderbolt. Might change this to Psychic last minute, but um, it does appear that I will stick with Psy Shock, honestly. I just feel like it's more, it's better, gets more mileage in this situation. Um, I'll tell her the speed afterwards, so you won't see the final speed. But, um, oh well, I'm probably not gonna have to because considering, I don't know, some of his stuff, I really do just need to be maxed out. But, um, Assault Vest is going to allow me to take more hits from his Thunderous, his, uh, Empoleon, his, um, not Zygarde, but there was something else. Of course, my, you know, my computer's being dumb, let's not even try it. Next up, we have Albatrick the Electros, because, you know, Electric Eel, so it was Electric, but it has Tross, so... Albatross, ah, funny, I'm, I'm a great, I'm great. Volt Switch, Toxic, Thunderbolt, Hidden Fire, Ice, uh, Mixed Defense, 32 and Special Attack, Volt Switch, of course, um, gotta be very careful around his Thunderous T, which is why I'm also carrying Toxic, uh, gives me another option, plus I can Toxic literally everything on his team, and he does not, well, he does have, um, Florges, so I have to be wary of that, um, other than that, I might actually change this to Acid Spray, just so I can deal with his uh, Florges a little bit better, uh, but we'll see with that. Next up we have Jet, Choice Bandit Sock, Sturdy, Poison Jab, Ice Punch, Close Combat Knockoff, Max Speed, uh, really don't, I need to, I might tailor this EV as well, but uh, just looking at it, uh, this would have been, this is a pretty good option because Poison Jab does allow me to cover floor just, and it more than likely won't be faster than me, unless it's like some weird Scarf offensive variant. Uh, Ice Punch allows me to cover Zygarde, and um, whatchamacallit, what's its face? Uh, Thunderous, there you go. Uh, close Combat covers, um, Empoleon, although uh, Chopoli Ray Empoleon will be something I do look for a little bit, but I'm expecting the Earthberry actually. I forgot what it's called. And Knockoff just give me a little bit of extra utility. Uh, hits um, 
Gorgeist and Jirachi rather rather well. And last but not least, we have Tapu Wulu, which is a carbon copy of last week's set because I felt like it would work here. So we're actually about to go battle. And uh, I would hope that you guys enjoy what comes next. It's not gonna be a live recording. Uh, I just wanted to get the analysis out of the way before we started battling. So um, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, just need to find the recording. Okay, there we go. <laughs> that was fast, it only took me like five minutes. So uh, apologies if it wasn't, if it seemed a little rushed, but uh, I did my best and I did go through everything I was gonna cover. So. Hopefully, we come out of this with a W. I'm not feeling great about this one, but we'll see. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. We have finished the battle with Aster. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and, okay. Oh, screen was freezing. Okay, never mind. we're good, we're back. But uh, we finally battled Aster and uh, here's the replay. So looking at his team, he didn't bring Megalopony. Uh, I kind of thought he would, to be honest, but um, I don't know, I guess my team did do okay against it uh, in general. And having Thunderous, Z, Thunderous TZ would be uh, pretty interesting. Uh, looking at his team just off of uh, the fact that Jirachi is there, and I completely ignored his existence for some reason. I just, after Diancie, I was like, okay, uh, Jirachi doesn't matter for some reason. And I ended up not bringing Volcanion, which would have been very useful against both his Florges and his um, Jirachi. And it probably would have had some use against like his Empoleon and stuff like that. So that was a very, very bad missed opportunity there. And I ended up bringing two mods that ended up being practically useless in Volcanion's stead because I didn't feel like Volcanion was going to do amazingly against his team. So, yeah, you know what? You win some, you lose some. It is, of course, uh, pre-building before, and you, you can't account. You can't, um... Hindsight is 2020. That's basically what I'm trying to say. And uh, the fact that Jirachi was on his team to begin with, he was probably going to 100% bring it. So... I, that was that's an error on my part. I should have been more prepared for it. So, just gotta be a little bit more careful and more thoughtful going forward. But um, yeah. So let's go straight into it. You saw my team like two minutes ago now, and uh, yeah. Or well, I guess for those of you who uh, skipped the analysis, it's only like five minutes this time. So I mean, I'll, I'll leave a link. And uh, this is more like a reminder for myself to leave a link to um, or not a link, a timestamp in the comments. But whatever. Um. So, Mega Diancie, Skarmory, Meloetta, AV Meloetta, um, Electros, which I was really considering putting Shookaberry on because of the fact that Zygarde has access to Thousand Arrows now, but yeah, didn't. And um, Bandit Sock and Scarfed Bulu. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into this. So, I'm going to lead off with Meloetta. Oh my gosh, my screen is being really bad. Okay. So, now we're at this. So, I'm going to lead off with Meloetta against his... Um, thing here is Absol. I'm gonna switch straight out because I'm expecting like Sucker Punch or Knock Off and I go into Sock and he does knock off my ban. I'm like, alright, whatever. So the ban is gone, which would have been really useful. Uh, he goes out in the floor just here, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and go for Close Combat. Which is 31%, which is fine. And I'm like, okay, whatever. It sucks I didn't have an item because I probably could have uh, done a little bit more. Uh, nevertheless, I'm gonna go into Skarmory here because it does give me an opportunity to get up my rocks if necessary. And this is where like the whole, the whole battle just like took really bad turns from here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get Stealth Rocks up as he goes into his Jirachi. I switch out and go into my Electros here. Um, so he gets his Rocks up. What I do is I click Toxic, expecting him to either switch out or you to either U-turn there like he did, or just switch straight out into um, Thunderous T more than likely, or into his Zygarde, which would allow me to get up, um, to get a Toxic on whatever. But he goes into Floridus, which is also a fairly good switch in considering this is an Electros. So, uh, Floyd just gets switched in, I get Toxic off, so you saw that happen. Um, so yeah, Floyd just is there, Electros is out, I'm gonna go ahead, and he's gonna wish up, and I'm gonna go ahead and Voltage out, because I wasn't expecting him to go into Thunderous T. Not, I can't make too many over predictions there. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into my Top of Bulu here. So yeah, like I said, this was a problem. This Jirachi right here is an issue because, and plus the fact that he has this uh, floor just setting up wishes and stuff like that, and it's annoying. So Jirachi comes out, a little bit of damage from rocks, and my Scarf Blue is going to do a ton of damage with Woodhammer, 46%, but he's just going to heal it all up because of the wish. So there really was no point to that. <laughs> there was literally no point to it. I mean, it did help me gauge the damage I need to do to it in order to take it out, but in the grand scheme of things didn't help me much. So he's gonna go ahead and Iron Head here. I actually did not expect him to carry Thunderbolt 
And I got kind of lucky this turn. Well, he got lucky getting the... Well, it's Serene Grace. I mean, still, it's only a 20% chance, but still. It's Jirachi with Serene Grace. You can't always... You, you, you gotta always account for that. So I defog away his rocks, right? And, um... So now I'm paralyzed, and so I'm expecting, I'm like, you know what, he's probably either just gonna take me out, or he's gonna try to get rocks up again, so I decide to stall for another turn. Okay, I don't know why I scrolled up and down there for no reason. Okay, whatever, it's still fixed. Uh, but yeah, so, what I expected was, um, I was gonna defog here, so if I didn't get paralyzed, the rocks are not on my side of the field, and you know, it's whatever, if he doesn't have it on his side, gives me another turn to think about my next move. But I'm going to get paralyzed, and now I'm just going to die because he's going to go for Thunderbolt because there's really nothing else that he really has to do at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and swap out into my Meloetta because I don't think... I mean, Iron Head's going to hurt, of course, but I was like, you know what? Might as well. He actually goes into his Absol here. Um, I don't know why. I did go for Shadow Ball, of course, and it is resistant. Um, and, of course, gets a special defense drop, so... <laughs> um, he goes for Iron Tail, predicting me to switch into my Diancie. But I'm just going to stay in and go for T-Bolt because it's another move. Criti critical hit right there didn't matter. I actually calc that out. And uh, yeah, so here comes his Empoleon. So I knew that Absol was done. That was my fault. It was just, it was over <laughs> for his Absol because, uh, yeah. And the fact that uh, as long as he doesn't sucker punching, then it's fine. He over predicted a little bit, but he did get damage on me, which did turn out to be uh, rather useful for him, to be honest. So I go with Psy Shock on it. Uh, it does 24%. Uh, as he goes for agility, which basically means there's two options. He's either sub berry or he's um, weakness policy. So if he goes for a sub this turn, he's berry, but he's not. He's flash cannon and he's got skull. He's, well, of course, he's probably going to carry skull. He's got agility as a third move and more than likely carrying uh, coverage as his fourth. Like, well, he doesn't actually have to cover carry coverage, to be honest. He covers pretty much everything on this team uh, with three moves, with two moves, excuse me. But uh, nevertheless, those flash can there just twenty percent. So I'm playing around the fact that since he didn't substitute there, he more than likely has a weakness policy on him. So um, plus two, uh, plus two speed, plus two Empoleon would be quite problematic for me. So I'm gonna play around him, and I go for Shadow Ball this turn, does thirty-two percent, and he's gonna go for Scald here, which does get a crit. Doesn't matter because he didn't burn me, but um. I get a Thunderbolt off, and we're gonna take out his Empoleon, and this is where the battle pretty much ends. So, he goes into his Zygarde here, right? So I'm like, all right, I gotta deal with Thousand Arrows without Skarmory's help, um, and it's just this, this is a problem. This is a problem. Uh, Shookaberry on my Electros would have been really nice in this situation. It's just. Uh, I, I failed so miserably. I go for Hidden Power Ice because I did carry it and I did 84%. If I was holding Specs or a Life Orb, I would have taken him out. But if I was holding Specs or a Life Orb, I would not have taken out his Empoleon. More than likely. <laughs> I would have taken so much more damage because I am, of course, Assault Vest in Meloetta. So, something to keep in mind. And yeah, this is basically the beginning of the end. He's at plus one attack and plus one speed, which means, and he's faster than Bulu, so he's gonna outspeed Bulu, so I expected that. And I thought that right here, um, his, whatchamacallit, his uh, Thousand Arrows wasn't going to take out Bulu because of the defenses. But I made one small miscalculation, and that was the fact that uh, Zygarde gets Sledge Wave. And he's going to take out my Bulu, and the game is just over from here. I mean, we buy, we just, I'm going to put it on full speed, fast speed now. So Thousand Arrows is going to take out Electros, Thousand Arrows is going to take out Mega Diancie, and Thousand Arrows is going to take out Sock. So. That is the end of the game, unfortunately. I went for Rock Polish just because, you know, on the off chance that I did, I would have been able to take out at least one Pokemon on this team, one more, and uh, or maybe even everyone. But uh, nevertheless, he played that very well. Uh, the fact that I had Sludge Wave, the fact that I didn't bring um, a Volcanion, a bunch of things played into the fact that I just got outplayed and outteamed, to be honest. Just through and through. So a very good game to Aster. He played very well, and uh, of course he ended up with a W, and we got minus four differential for this week, which sucks. But we'll come back next week stronger, better, and hopefully better prepared. And uh, that's about it. So you can you can get all of his information below. You can also get Lars' information. He does he provided the fantastic work for the thumbnails that we've been using since season four, I believe, or season four, or season five, one or the other. And uh, he deserves it. He's um, a GBA member, 
now. He's been a GBA member since our season two, I believe. So it's incredible. It's been quite a long time. So uh, uh, all the all uh, all good things to him. And uh, make sure you check out the GPC channel, below, uh, which will be in the description below, which does uh, t in order to allow you to keep up to date with everything going on with our league. And make sure you follow um, Aster and subscribe to his channel, stuff like that. They'll all be in the description below. And I hope to see you guys next week. I'm going to try to upload something this week because uh, I should be doing more than just these. Anyways, I'll catch you guys later. Until we meet again, all right, peace out. Goodbye.